Bailey from Fig Securities. Mark, good morning to you and uh, thank you very much for joining us. Now, we know that the UK may potentially trigger Article 50 uh, as early as this week, but it looks like uh, Prime Minister Theresa May is continuing to, to get a bit of a bumpy ride on Brexit. Yeah, good morning, Leanne. I guess the, the debate continues both in the press and uh, in the House of Commons and House of Lords uh, that continued over the, over the weekend with uh, UK Brexit Secretary uh, David uh, uh, Davis uh, talking about the fact that look, they don't really want to have an, an alternative plan B that's publicly known because if that is the case and if it does have to come back to the, the House of Parliament for a vote on the final deal uh, in terms of accepting any final deal in, in two years' time, if the EU does know that that's the case, then, it, it, then it's not likely to put forward a good deal because we'd probably like to see the UK remain inside the EU. So there's all kinds of political um, um, systems that, that are in place that kind of limit the government's ability to divulge that. In addition as well, the Lords have sent back the, the bill against the House of Commons, as you said in the intro, because it wants to secure the rights of the EU nationals within the UK and vice versa, UK nationals living within inside the EU, and that still hasn't been clarified by the government. So, as you rightly say, the, the talk is that the Article 50 could be triggered as early as Tuesday this week, with maybe Wednesday, Thursday more likely. Um, there are some kind of dates further down March um, that are also potential, but again, it does get complicated because you've got uh, some Dutch elections uh, later this week, and then you've got uh, a, a meeting in Rome to actually celebrate the, the signing of the Treaty of Rome uh, later on in March as well. So, there's a lot of other dates um, in March that could potentially get in the way, but you know. Although the um, <coughs> excuse me, the UK government is still talking about um, March, it's not committing to this week, and it's just saying still by the end of March is our most likely time uh, timeline for a triggering uh, Article 50. And as you rightly say, it's important to note that the the House of Lords can only delay it, can't actually prevent um, the the Article 50 being uh, and this bill being mm -hmm. passed. So I think it's uh, it's it's, it's going to happen, but uh, it's it's still a bit a bit of a debate as to when. Mm -hmm. And Mark, the Bank of England is meeting on Thursday, I believe. It's, it's likely that they will remain on hold with their rates um, despite sort of rising inflation. But um, a lot of that down to, to the fall in, in sterling that we're watching. Um, but do you think this Bank of England meeting could, you know, is going to be sidelined because of all of the talk around the uh, Article 50? Yeah, I, th I think, you know, as you, as you say, I think the Bank of England will sit on its hands still until we really know that the fallout um, from triggering Article 50. We had seen some pretty good um, figures uh, out of the UK in terms of economic data. Then, but then we had a bit of a, I think, a soft retail uh, sales print uh, a couple of weeks ago, which kind of surprised the market. And we are seeing, you know, that increase in inflation, but largely due to the fall in sterling. So, you know, the, the Bank of England will probably look through that temporary uh, uh, blip in those costs because once that's worked through the system after a year or so then you know the inflation will fall back down but I think the the Bank of England is, is likely to just still sit on the sidelines just wait and see what happens in terms of the the overall economic performance uh, you know following any trigger of uh, triggering of article 50 um, because it's still not sure in terms of what's going to happen I mean you still see in the banks debate you know whether they're going to be still headquartered in in London or whether they're going to move to Dublin or elsewhere on in continental Europe as well so there's a lot of unknowns that still have to be played played out and, and you know the Bank of England has to be ready to respond to those. Now, still speaking on, on Europe, just uh, keeping our attention over there for now, we have the uh, Dutch elections happening there on, on Wednesday. Do you think it's likely to be a fairly messy process of trying to couple a government together? We could see some further political uncertainty. Yeah, the political uncertainty in, in Europe is just unfortunately one that we've had for the last, you know, two or three centuries, and it's not going to change in the uh, next two or three weeks. As you rightly point out, uh, the Dutch election on Wednesday, and it is a proportional representation um, voting system. Um, uh, at the moment, though, it does look like the uh, anti-Muslim Freedom Party uh, has fallen away a bit in the polls, and it's looking like the, the Liberal Party, the mainstream Liberal Party, will actually uh, be the largest um, uh, party in the parliament there, you know, as you rightly say, you still have to kind of cobble together a coalition uh, and how strong that is, you know, will depend on the final votes. But it's probably the risk in, 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 in Holland is probably fading a little and you still, but bigger issues obviously probably still in, in, in Italy uh, and obviously with Greece with a, a big big payout of um, a principal repayment due in July and there's still negotiations which seem to have kind of fallen off everybody's radar still ongoing as to the release of uh, another instalment payment from the bailout package. Mm -hmm. um 
All right, now just a very quick thought from you. Um, we've uh, spoken a lot about these non-farm payrolls. The uh, uh, print that we saw overall, um, you know, looked to be pretty positive, I, I suppose, there on Friday. But I think there is a growing conversation about whether or not the FOMC may be behind the curve when it comes to tightening rates. Yeah, I, I don't think the FOMC is behind the curve. Uh, I completely agree with Janet Yellen, who said that on, on several occasions. You can put to, together the argument that it, that it is. But I guess if you, the key part to determining that is looking at the, the wage inflation. And again, that was rather tepid. If you look on a month-by-month -month basis in February, came in at 0.2. Consensus was 0.3. Yes, January was revised up slightly. So the year-on-year -year was in line with consensus at 2.8%. Uh, but again, it doesn't really indicate that the Fed is behind the curve. And in actual fact, in terms of the market reaction uh, to those non-farm payrolls, you know, the, you actually saw the longer dated, longer end US Treasuries actually rally and the yields fall. You know, 10 years, for example, fell around about three basis points to uh, 258 on Friday after the news. So I don't think that they're, they're behind the curve. But, you know, I think the, the, the hike this week is certainly priced in and, and everybody will be watching that statement and examining that statement for any clues in terms of uh, future guidance. I think it'll, they'll hike, but they'll probably the outlook statement will be quite dovish. Still saying, look, it's very data dependent in terms of the future hikes. But again, probably a position in the market for for three hikes in total this year. So another two hikes this year, as the uh, kind of the, the blue dot plots uh, that we saw in December have already indicated to the market. And I think that's the way that the Fed will play that. Uh, I think it'll probably be a, a, a pretty much unanimous decision. You might get one or two dissenters, but given the comments from the various regional Fed presidents that we've seen over the last couple of of years, it's probably going to be pretty close to being a unanimous decision to hike. And, you know, given the data, as they've always said, it's going to be data dependent. I think that's probably the, the, the right thing to do uh, in March, and but still being a, a bit cautious about the outlook for, um, for the rest of the year. All right, fantastic. Mark, as always, your analysis very much appreciated. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, Leanne. Have a good day. Mark Bailey joining us there from Fig Securities. Coming up,